Dang, I'm good at this game. What? Bruh! Bruh! Oh, what? You were watching this whole time? Well, you, just pretend like you didn't see that, okay? I swear, I am like a pro at this game. But anyways, today we're gonna be doing something really epic and really fun and having to do with this troll dinosaur that decided to die on a cactus. Specifically, today we're gonna be talking about processing and we're gonna make our own game, a clone of this dinosaur game from scratch. It's really cool. If you guys are interested in doing like side projects or are really into coding, processing is like a super good thing because it lets you do graphics really easily, it's like really easy to learn, and it's just really fun to just play around with. So today we're gonna go right into it. Hello everybody, I'm Karara and today we're gonna be talking about processing and we're gonna start by first downloading it onto our computer. So basically today we're gonna be using JavaScript specifically and to get the JavaScript, you basically search up processing 5. Then you go to this p5.js, you go to download, and then all you gotta do is go down to the single file, p5.js, click that. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our documents folder, we're gonna create a new folder for our project, which we're gonna call Dino Game. And within that folder, we're gonna put that p5.js thing in. Alrighty, so I've moved my p5.js into the Dino Game folder, so if I click here, you can see p5.js is there. So now, in order to edit our stuff and to actually make a video game, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our Visual Studio Code and open up this folder. Alrighty, so we opened up our folder, and now the first thing we gotta do in order to make our thing show up is we gotta make an index.html file. So we just click the new file button, type index.html, and we're good. So an HTML file always starts with an HTML header, and then we're gonna put all our scripts in the header. All right, so we included our p5.js script, and we also had to make more scripts to actually show stuff on the screen. So we're gonna make a new file, and we're gonna call it sketch.js. So basically what sketch.js is gonna do is it's gonna print out a canvas, like the basically it's gonna print everything onto our index.html. So basically processing asks us to have two methods. The first one is gonna be setup. So basically a setup function is gonna be run at the beginning of our game. So in this case, we just wanna make a canvas. All right, so to make our canvas, all we gotta do is type create canvas. I made it 600 by 600 because that's just how many pixels our canvas is. And also, processing needs a draw function, and this is basically what's gonna be called like every frame. So every frame, processing is gonna redraw what we tell it to redraw. So in this case, we just wanted to draw our canvas, and to do that, we just do background and then set that to some color. This basically says that its blackness value is uh, 51 where zero is fully black and 255 is fully white now before our sketch actually shows up in our index.html We had to first include it So we duplicate our script over here and then we make source sketch.js All right So now we have our p5.js which gives us all the libraries we need for our project And we also have our sketch.js which will print out our background Let us test this so basically to test this we just go to our folder We double click index.html and we'll blam there's our background, there's our game. Now what we wanna do is actually make a player for the guy to use. Like what's the point of having a game if you can't even do anything? Like what's the point of just having a black square on the screen? This is not anywhere close to the dino game. You know, we, we, let's just play the dino game again. Okay, fine, fine. We gotta focus, we gotta finish this. All right, so let's make a player. So now we just do the same thing we did for the sketch file. We just make a new JS file. So we do player.js, okay? And now we're gonna make a player class. So the way we're gonna do that is function, player and within our player we want to keep track of its location so we basically keep track of its x and y coordinates now the weird thing about processing or actually not that weird but like the thing about processing is that it basically does increasing y coordinate is down and increasing x coordinate is to the right so basically in order to make things go from top to bottom we have to invert the y coordinate so now we don't like hard coding values because that's a bad practice. Don't hard code values, it's not a good idea. So we're gonna go into our sketch.js and add a couple variables to help us out. So we need a player size, we need to know how big our player is. Let's make him 20 by 40. Okay, and then we gotta have a starting x position and starting y position. Now we don't want our starting y position to be 50 because that would be like starting at the top of the screen. How's it gonna jump then? So we wanted to start at the bottom of the screen, but we also wanted to start on the ground. So let's first define what the ground is. All right, let's just look at our canvas real quick to the side. So we have a 600 by 600 canvas. We want our ground to be around here. So that's like five, six of it. So maybe like our ground could be like 50 pixels from the bottom. So that'd be 550. And then our, and then that's just basically a starting Y. So in player.js, we set our this.x to starting X and this.y to starting Y. And then our this.y to ground. All right, so for every class, we're gonna have two functions for it. We're gonna have an update function and we're gonna have a show function. What the update function is gonna do is it's gonna update every single frame and tell our player what to do. 
and then a show function is actually going to draw it. So let's first do a show function because that's cooler. So we first set what color we want to be. Let's make it white, fill, 200. Bro, why is it auto-correcting me? It's so annoying. Ugh. Okay, fill, 255. That's our white. Okay, 255 is white. And then we just do rect. And then we do x, comma, y, comma, and then our width and height of our player. All right, let's put this guy in our index.html and then let's test it. We just refresh and it's not there. Why? Oh, okay, so basically we're calling this show function in player, right? But we're not calling it in our actual draw function, which processing use. So we had to go to our sketch.js. So in order to make this work, we got to make our player first. So we'll have a global variable bar p. And then we'll make our p the new player, p equals new player. And then to show it, we just call the show method in our draw function over here. Real quick, we're gonna fix this, this.x and this.y, because they're not global variables. All right, now it should work. Refresh over here. Very cool. We have a player on the screen. Now let's make him jump. Now, because we want this to be a legit game, right? We want it to be cool. We want to have actual physics in it. No, actually, no, we don't need to worry about science, but we're gonna have acceleration, okay? and we're gonna have Y velocity. So our player is not gonna be moving to side to side on our screen, so we don't have to have an X velocity, but we have to have an up and down velocity. So we'll have this dot Y velocity is zero. And then we wanna have our gravity work on the object. So in our update function, we'll have gravity. But first we gotta define what gravity is. So let's just say that that is equal to one. Bar gravity equals one. Okay, and then we go to player.js and we make our update function. So basically this update function is going to be called every time a frame happens. So basically we want our y coordinate to increase whatever y velocity is. So if our y velocity is going upward, we want our y coordinate to go upward. If our y velocity is downward, we want it to go downward. But since our coordinate system is flipped, we subtract y vel from y to get the new y. So this.y equals this.y minus this.y vel. Okay, and then because we have acceleration, y vel has to change every time as well but only if it's not on the ground. So if it's in the air, it'll slowly come back down to the ground. So it'll have upward y velocity, slowly come down, and then downward velocity. So every time we update, if we're not on the ground, that is this dot y is less than ground, our y velocity is gonna be decreased by gravity every time. But if it's on the ground, we wanna set our y velocity to zero. Okay, we got this, so now we wanna make a jump. And all we do to make a jump is just to set its y velocity to go upward and then it'll fall back down on its own accord. All right, I just set it a jump speed, but we don't have a jump speed yet. So let's make it in the sketch and we'll put our update function in and it should work. Okay, we put in jump speed and then we got to put in our update, p.update. And then let's just see, how should we do this? Okay, let's just make the spacebar make a jump. So basically whenever a key press happens, processing uses a function called key pressed. And then if the key is a spacebar, which we do using this, we will make a jump. All right, let's test this. We have a jumping player, very cool. Dude, this is actually so fun. Oh. oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's illegal. But that's pretty cool, right? We can actually make our player jump. Now it's time to get to the cool stuff. Well, now before we let it jump, we can't let it jump if it's not on the ground, so let's just change that real quick. Only if it's on the ground can it jump. If this dot y is greater than or equal to ground, then we can jump. No, why is it not letting me double jump? I want to triple jump. Come on, be that way. Fine, fine. All right, pretty cool. So now we're basically done with the player, and now what we got to do is make the obstacles. So let's make a new JS file, obstacle.js. And then I'll do all the basic stuff. It's the same as the player, but I'll just set it up. All right, now that we have our basic obstacle stuff, let's define some variables that we need for our obstacle. So basically our obstacle has to have a length, a height, and how fast it moves. So let's do that. Alrighty, now let's go back to the obstacle and in our show function, we'll just do the same thing we did the previous time, except let's make our obstacle, let's be, have a nice little color over here. How about we do red? The way we do that is instead of using only one number, we use three numbers, the RGB value. So red is R, so we do 255 for R and zero for the rest. And then we just do red. X, Y, and then the width, and then the height. By the way, this.x equals width basically sets this to 600, which is the width of our canvas, and it makes sure that our obstacle starts at the right side of the screen. Alrighty, so we have our draw function for this, but if we draw it, it's not going to show up because right now it's off the screen. So let's first do the update function. So basically every frame, it has to move to the left by obstacle speed. So all we got to do to do that is just do this.x 
is equal to this dot x minus optical speed. However, once it reaches the end of the screen, like once it gets all the way to the left, we wanted to restart and go again. So we have more obstacles. There's no fun just jumping over one obstacle. Like what was the point of one cactus speed in the dinosaur game? Like, actually. So once it gets to the end, all we gotta do is if this dot x is less than negative of the obstacle width, then we just reset it to the end. All right, let's put our, all our functions in our sketch.js and we should be good. So we make a var o for our obstacle, o equal new obstacle, and then o.show, o.update. Hold up, we have an error, oh, oh, oh. It says obstacle not defined, so basically what that means is that in our index we forgot to include it. So we go over here, we duplicate this, and then obstacle. Close out the console, we refresh. There we go. We got our obstacle, epic. Now this isn't very hard. Let's try to make the obstacle a little bit bigger so this will be harder. I think like double the size would work, right? And what's really good about not hard coding the values is that we just change it once here and we're done. We don't have to like go through looking through our code to find everything. Okay, let's try this. Okay, that's pretty good. If we wanted to do, be fancy and like add randomized stuff, we could, but this is good for now. So now we actually want to make sure that if they collide, then we're done with the game. So basically what we want to do is in our sketch.js, we'll just make sure that the two are not touching. So let's make a function game over, and then I'll just do the logic here, but it's basically saying that if like the y coordinates and x coordinates are overlapping, then they don't work out. And then we had to end the game. And in order to store this, we'll just make a boolean at the top, var game over is equal to false. All right, so basically this is a game over function. It might be a little bit buggy, but that's what we got for now. And then in order to make sure this works, we're only gonna draw it and change our drawing if the game is not over. But once the game is over, it should stop. Alrighty, let's test this. Nope. Oh, oh. So we had to make sure that we call our game over over here. And now let's test it. Well, we should probably have two different names for a function because this is JavaScript, so we're gonna change this to check game. And then over here, we'll make this check game. Alright. Very cool, perfect. We actually did it. All right, I don't want them to disappear like that, so we're just gonna keep the shows outside of this loop. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, we jumped over it. Oh, we jumped over another one. Another one? Another one. Another one, and then game over. Very cool. But we want this to keep going over and over and over and over again, so let's try to make this a cool loop. So let's have some text that shows us, like, is the game started or is it going on right now? So basically we're gonna put an alt statement here. Otherwise it'll have the text game over, uh, quick place space to start again. So all we gotta do for that is we just gotta do text size, let's try like 32 and then text and then what text we wanna show. And then we put the position. Let's, let's make a banner. So like across here, that'd be like from 100 to 500. How about that? All right, let's test this. Very nice, we have our thing. Now we're ready to do some cool stuff. Now let's actually make it so that if we click space, it actually begins. Well, so we could just set game over to true over here. Okay, wait. okay, let's just make a restart game function. So all we gotta do for restart game is we do game over equals false. And then we basically just gotta recreate the player. So we do p equals new player and o equals new obstacle. And then we want to make it over here, so uh, if game over, then we start game. And let's just start with the game over is true, so that we can click space when we want to start. Alright, let's test it. Oh, oh yeah, let's go. Holy, let's die. Click space again. The dino game is working, hooray! Alright, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed that, that was fun for me. I really enjoy making games like this. Like. It didn't take any time. Okay, it literally took me less than an hour just to do this. Wait, in fact, it took me like 40, like 30 minutes. It's actually insane. So if you guys just want to play around with this, it's really fun. Just literally, it's free to download. Just download VS Code, then download your p5.js, drag it into the folder, make all this cool stuff, do whatever you want. Like one of my friends was showing me how to make a snake game with this, and it's super cool. It's just like really fun learning how to do this. So hope you guys learned something new. Hope you guys are encouraged to do more programming. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys again for watching and see you guys next time.